Hello everyone, this is Piero San Giorgio. I'm very happy today to have as a guest Marcus Follin. Is that good pronunciation? Yes, it is. Also known as the Golden One, big channel on uh, YouTube and on the internet. And I'm very pleased today to, to host you, Marcus, for your excellent book that came out, um, Dauntless, which uh, has a great subtitle, which is a handbook for the quest for enlightenment and glory. I love that. I actually bought, you were kind enough to send me one, and I so much like it that I bought another one for my son, for my two sons now. And uh, I also got, which I think is great, I was wearing it today because it was cold this morning, your amazing hoodie with Perseus. I challenged my kids. I said, do you know who that, that is? And they said, well, of course, it's Perseus with the Medusa. Mm. So, so that was good. And um, it's high quality, well done. And there's a lot of other nice uh, merchandise that you have on your website, which I'll put the link below. But let's talk about your book. Why a book? What led you to, to write this excellent book? Yes, first and foremost, thank you for... Um the kind words and nice to see the the Perseus and Medusa and glad that your sons are um, could uh, could identify it it's a it's a glorious uh, myth indeed uh, so basically I uh, I of course um, I live in Sweden uh, and for a long time I've been uh, averse to the Swedish regime then of course I understood that it's not only in Sweden it's uh, all of the West all of Europe basically that um, that many young men are be basically being lied to in so many different ways. Of course, I've talked a lot about these issues in um, on my YouTube channel, in videos, uh, but I wanted to have one place where I had all of my teachings, so to speak, all of my thoughts, all of my advice in one place. And that was sort of a way for me to uh, help a lot of people because when I see many things happening, uh, to take an example, if I see um, a young man being uh, completely out of shape because he is, um, yeah, he doesn't take care of himself, and I see he's unhappy, he is, um, he has a low self confidence. He, uh, yeah, doesn't doesn't like himself. Um, so I thought to myself, how can I, how can I help um, many of these men, many of these young guys? Um, then I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to write a book and this is sort of the book I would wish I had read when I was 15 or something. Uh, because many of these things, no one is saying them, uh, unless of course you look you, all throughout the internet. But I wanted to have one physical copy where everyone could just get the the basics on um, on how to survive and thrive in the modern world. So everything from training to relationships to, um, yeah, I even quote your book. Uh, I talk about your book, about survivalism, all of these different things that, you know, no one in, in school is going to tell you about survivalism, at least not in Sweden. They're not going to tell you about the um, negative effects of a uh, poor diet or uh, anything like that. It's just uh, other things you learn. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to write it and uh, have this as my my um, contribution to, to restoring uh, order to the West. Yes, I must say that it's, um, you know, you, I'm, I'm much older than you. I'm 49. And um, I was, uh, when I, when I re read the book, I was excited to read, of course. And I was not expecting much. I was, I was saying, okay, it's, uh, you know, you're a successful YouTuber. You have um, very much success in how you manage your own body, which is already something more successful than what I do. But certainly, certainly it was interesting. So I didn't know what to expect. And as I started to read, I saw that uh, every, and first of all, let me say that it's not hard to read because a lot of young people who may watch this, they, they are scared of reading books because in school, we're not trained anymore to read the big books and, and, and read fast. It's fast to read because every topic is in one sort of small chapter or big paragraph. And, uh, and everyone teaches and encompasses everything that a young, young man could need in life from how you train, what you should eat, um, how you should behave yourself, even how you should dress and look. And uh, how to, um, uh, you know, 
think in a way and how you structure your your thoughts. Of course, you give some of your opinions uh, in, as well, but I thought that it is very complete, and I was surprised that there was there is so much information in in a, what is relatively a short and quick to read book, which is a which is really great. Because um, as we know, young people they're not trained to read anymore. Maybe they go through school, they read one or two books. Whereas my in my time, you had to read maybe five hundred, and in my parents' time, you had to read five thousand. I'm, I'm exaggerating, maybe 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 a thousand books throughout your your school years. And, uh, and now this is um, this is complete. And um, would you say that today young people are 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 lost, They're not finding anyone, no fathers, no government telling them the wholeness of life, which goes from body to mind? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that was one of the reasons as well that I am, of course, angry at many of the things we see and angry at. I am a bit sad myself as well that I didn't have anyone telling me when I was 15. But then again, many things. So I'm I'm 31 now, uh, by the way. Uh, but a lot of these things they weren't public knowledge um, 15 years ago. Such a thing as porn consumption, no one really knew it was that bad 15 years ago. So no one told me when I was 17 that you know you shouldn't uh, watch this because it's bad. No one told me that. Uh, same thing when it comes to a lot of dietary advice. You know, you had uh, during the 80s this anti-fat um, <laughs> propaganda campaign, uh, mostly from the sugar industry. Uh, and of course, I'm born in 89, so I have grown up uh, during the 90s also with, uh, you know, I had a quite good diet growing up. But in retrospect, what I will do different with my children is that they will get a lot more meat, a lot more uh, animal fats, etc., um, so I'm, I'm sort of angry at many of the, the lies I've grown up with, or perhaps not lies, but the, the lack of information. Um, same thing if we're talking about the relationship between men and women. Of course, in, in feminist Sweden, you have a completely different um, uh, attitude from school and from culture, which, you know, if many young men, they hear that you should be in a certain way. And then women react very poorly to it because they want something completely different. But mm -hmm. that's something completely different. It's something older men need to tell these younger men uh, because otherwise, otherwise they might go out and you know, have a completely different um, uh, view of women uh, that won't lead anywhere productive. So, and also, of course, if you look on uh, role models from culture from Hollywood etc it's you know degenerate rappers or whatever it might be and they don't really they aren't really good role models at all so uh, I do I've tried to be at least somewhat um, it might sound a bit arrogant to say it but uh, I've tried at least and uh, if I could give some direction in uh, in some regards it's what I've uh, tried to do both of course on YouTube and uh, other social media, but uh, but also in the book. So um, that's also want to get you know a, a handbook that is to the point, uh, because a lot of other uh, many other authors uh, they want uh, they want to uh, elaborate on a on a new way of thinking uh, and not much as what to do. And this is of course something you do well in your book as well that you you give actual advice, you give actual hands-on advice that you can incorporate. So that's also something I try to do with Dauntless that, okay, I read this and I can directly incorporate it into my life. So it's not only a new ideology or a new philosophy for whatever. In fact, when I, when I also, when I read the book, I found that um, contrary to what our enemies might, uh, might expect or might say about you and the same as, as me, is that they try to depict you and me or people like us as extremists. But when I read the book and when I read the advice, because the book is much more powerful long term than a video on YouTube, because on a, on a book you can think a long time before you write a sentence and you can choose the words. Whereas on YouTube, sometimes you say things um, either with humor or a bombastic way to make an impression. And, and that's all fine. But in the book, you have to be more, more careful writing things that can be used against you, perhaps. So, so you have to be careful. And I thought, and I thought that in your book, whether it's about, um, you know, ethnicities, race, uh, religion, 
nationalism, things like that, for example, they are extremely um, balanced, I think. They are very wise, they're not provocative. It's a very, uh, and I, 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 I found that they are, I even took notes from one of my next books, and, um, and it is very much not common sense because it's not common anymore, but it's good sense. It mm. is it is what you should you should not be an extremist. You should not be a radical in the sense, or maybe you should be radical in how you think, but definitely in how you express that thought. It comes out as very balanced and very respectful, and um, at the same time, you know, um, and this is perhaps a, a difference between. Uh, the, the Swedish mind and my Italian, okay, now it's Swiss mind, but certainly there is more rigidity. And I think that people from more Southern Europe like me, they look high to rigidity because we are more flexible in sometimes. And, and I think in today's world, flexibility has been a problem because we accepted too much things doing compromises. Mm. And, and as a man myself in my life, I, I find out now that I need more rigidity because I made too many compromises. And in fact, this is this is the point that balance is in fact the fruit of not doing compromises, especially with yourself. What what, what do you think? Because I think this is comes out of your book a lot. What do you think of that? Yeah, so basically I, I would agree that much of the, uh, especially the philosophy part and the politics part of the book, they are common sense, uh, but it's just that we live in such a, such a clown world at the moment that common sense is being seen as extremist. So when I write, when I wrote the book and when I promote my, uh, my insights, etc., I, I never try to be... Um, you know, reactionary in that sense. I always try to have my worldview based on myself. So even if they say, oh, you are uh, an extremist, I don't listen to them. I don't want to play into their stereotype of what I should be because I see this quite often that uh, primarily younger guys, they say, oh, they're going to call us extremists or fascists anyway. So therefore we might as well be super extreme. But that's letting them, that's letting the enemy dictate the pace for us so for me it's just my views a lot of it is common sense it is something you could say to a um, regular man 70 years ago uh, 100 years ago 200 years ago a thousand years ago and he would say yeah of course of course it's completely natural to put your own family first of course it's only natural to look out for your local community to support your local economy to um to have a you know, to take responsibility for your family, to be a, a man among men, to be a good uh, uh, father figure, etc. It's just today that it's so, you know, fathers are vilified. Uh, so if you look on parents' magazines, it's uh, nowadays you don't often see a father, especially not a white father. Um, so for me, it's sort of like, um, you know, going back to basics, just promoting common sense and saying with a voice of... Um, yeah, a clear voice saying, you know what, you're you're not. It's not strange to believe in these things. It's completely natural. It's completely normal. So uh, yeah, that's my uh, that's my take on the the extremist question. It's um, we are the normal ones. They are the uh, extreme ones. No, I agree. And unfortunately, the, the 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 these people who have very strong ideology, they have taken control of. Uh, the universities in the 1920s and 1930s, and, and it's been worsening since. Then somewhere in the 70s, they took control of popular culture. Then they took control of the schools, uh, of the kindergartens now. And, um, and now they can force their agenda, even if in numbers they represent a very tiny portion of the population. And so because the whole education system from cradle to the grave, in fact, because it encompasses everything, uh, is representing of of a very strange and special sick mind, I think, and cult, sick culture. We need to have education in parallel to re-educate, to relearn, retrain, reteach things to young people. And in your book, you put a lot of effort, a lot of emphasis on the effort that people need to do for self-discipline 
and uh, and and this is I was not surprised by that because knowing how much you you practice sports, and I do practice sports on on, on a much lower level, but certainly I know. Uh, how much discipline you need to wake up every morning, do what you need to do, take the time and have an objective to have, for some people it's a, it's a beautiful and nice body, for others it's a functional and healthy, or it can be all together. How does your background in um, fitness and, 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 and culturism, I don't know how you call that, certainly you do kickboxing and, 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 and Thai boxing, and, I think, uh, how that self-discipline that you learned for sports, how do you see it uh, being used for everyday life for everyday people? Yeah, so so first and foremost, I think the um, what many uh, many younger men they are something they're lacking, and the lack of it creates um, unhappiness. So they lack direction, they lack goals, they lack something to strive for. So they go around not really knowing what to aim for. So they take every day as it is. Uh, but I understand now that the the lack of adventure, the lack of struggle, the lack of a higher goal to strive towards, it's it's making them unhappy. So therefore, they compensate by doing a lot of different things. It might be drugs. It might be excessive um, uh, video game playing, or it might be something that isn't really congruent with uh, a long-term happiness. So when you have the the quest for physical excellence, it might be uh, getting better at Thai boxing. It might be getting physically more muscular. It might be even if you have uh, someone who's running in the forest, he might want to get a better time, a, slo- a time around a lap, for example. As long as you have something to strive towards, you will have that sense of being on a quest and that will be, you know, will give purpose to you. Uh, so that is actually one of the first things I understood when I looked upon other other young men uh, over yeah this last 10 years. I saw they are, you know, something is missing and I think that is it. Uh, and you don't really see it um, with, uh, with men who have their own companies. They have that drive, they have that fire, but for a lot of, especially young men, when they don't have that when they're just drifting, um, I think uh, a lot of unhappiness uh, and other detrimental behaviors come from it. And in regards to the discipline aspect, when you have, when you start going to the gym, for example, it's like a, a big piece of the puzzle is being placed, and then smaller pieces are being placed um, there as well, such as sleep. Uh, when you go to when you train hard, it can be Thai boxing or it can be the gym or, or wrestling or whatever it might be. Uh, when you understand that you need a complete, um, a complete puzzle and sleep is, a, is an integral part there as well, that will come into play. Then you understand, okay, diet is a good way. So automatically when you start seeing results in the gym, when you start seeing that, oh, can I optimize this? Can I get better by adjusting lifestyle factors? then you start putting all of these um, uh, pieces into place. Uh, so that's where uh, a good place to start with discipline, I'd say. It's when you understand that through discipline, you will get so many benefits. And uh, when you get that taste of, um, well, success in, in the gym or in uh, when you learn new stuff in, uh, in a martial arts or whatever it might be, when you get that those small victories, uh, the discipline will come much easier because then you see a direct reward of it. So I'd say usually I give the the gym uh, as a good starting point because then a lot of different things will uh, will fall into place naturally. In fact, having having good physical exercise and fitness is um, is a way to provoke uh, endorphins and hormones that makes you feel good, and it's one of the best uh, ways to get out of depression and especially these times where there is a lot of uh, uh, young people, especially who cannot go, get out, they cannot party. And this is a young, young, young people thing. They get depressed. They don't see a future because there's no uh, horizon out of what is, has been happening for a year and a half. I cannot even mention because otherwise we get striked. Um, and yet, and, and it definitely sport, going, going running, going fighting, going, uh, even if you have to do it in your room, uh, pull-ups uh, and, and so on, 
you, you and, and 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 everything squats and whatever you need to do on your own will make you feel better. You just but of course the discipline is hard. So uh, looking at uh, videos uh, on the internet of training and 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 finding perhaps how you say uh, role 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 models, uh, people who like you for a lot of young people uh, and. Uh, and and others can can when I was a kid I used to like watch uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger um, pumping iron and, mm. uh, and I never I never went to big big muscle development but certainly the discipline that was required was fascinating to me and um, and so the these um, um, I only I just didn't like the the fact that they all were almost half naked around with li little yeah. <laughs> I found that. To look a bit gay, but I understand now it's to show the muscles, obviously. But it's a bit, it's a bit weird. <laughs> but certainly, certainly, you 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 give in your book that spark. What what would be? Um, so I I had, again we we are talking about Dauntless, uh, the book by Marcus Follin, the golden one, and uh, I'll put again the link so that you can order. And again, the merchandise that is with around. The T-shirts. The, I actually also bought a T-shirt, but but I don't have it here. But the the hoodie is is amazing, and it's actually it's very warm because here in the farm, we have nice spring days in the during the day. But in the morning, at five in the morning, when I go out and I walk and I and I check if everything is fine, when between five and six, I'm certainly outside. It's a bit cold, and it's very warm. One, it's not like those thin hoodies that you need a jacket on top. This one is is really nice. Um, so I'll put the link below. What would be the the next project that you have? What what is your uh, what is um, because you're also you're also a father, uh, so you're also a family man. So you're increasing the qualities to become a full man over time, which is it's a lifelong uh, exercise. W what are your next projects? Yeah, so uh, first and foremost, again, thank you for the kind words of the hoodie. I'm, I'm quite pleased with it myself, if I may say so. Uh, so yeah, of course, uh, long term goal is to be a, a patriarch like yourself with a, with a big family. Uh, so yeah, long term goal, uh, a bit short term goal, of course, a lot of new things for uh, Legio Gloria. So the, the clothing, I'm rocking a yep. polo shirt here as well. Uh, so that's actually been my main focus ever since a while back, since I understood that YouTube wasn't really, uh, yeah, being shadow banned, etc. wasn't really going upwards um, as much as I uh, you know, in, in relation to the work I put in. So I focused more on the clothing as of late. Uh, same thing with the supplement company. Um, and then also I am actually re I'm actually writing my second book at the moment. So Dauntless is, yes, you know, it's more uh, a handbook on many things, what to do, how you can actively incorporate your um, uh, certain things in your life and uh, the next book which will hopefully be out later this year it will more deal with the the culture uh, and the war on um, on our minds so it's more um it's for for people to read it and to be able to better withstand certain cultural influences that might be detrimental so you see many things in culture you always see the um, the, the white man being bad, he's always immoral, he's always doing bad stuff. You see that continuously repeated in, in culture. So I, I pointed out in the book saying, okay, look out for this. Um, so that's, it's more about the, the, the mental aspect, how to avoid getting into a certain way of thinking. Because when you do, when you start believing that you are yourself, you are a, a bad individual just because of who you are, yeah, it won't be good for your mental well-being, it won't be good for your um, quality of life, uh, and also it goes into the the, the broader um, political struggle that how, how we view ourselves. So at the moment, uh, this is especially true in, in Sweden's situation, we have been conditioned in our minds to always put others first. So it's never about putting your own people first because that's uh, extremist or whatever. So I write a lot about you know, trying to re reconfigure our minds to, uh, to believe that it's just as it was up until very recently. It's normal and good. It's moral 
to to put your own family first. Uh, so that's uh, it's sort of like a complement to Dauntless, but I talk more about culture, the the mental aspect, how to rewire uh, the way you think. So uh, yeah, that's the the next project. Interesting. I certainly will look forward to, to read it. Perhaps one last question. In your book, you give a lot of emphasis on the importance of brotherhood, of having uh, good friends you can rely on and you can train with and so on. And in today's world of uh, high individualism and uh, fragmentation of societies into little groups, into individual pleasures on the internet and entertainment and, and so on, um, we do not find at all the brotherhood, the friendships that we could have in past generations. And um, you, you, you put emphasis on, on building that. How would you proceed for all the young men that listen to us and listen to you? What would advice would you tell them on how to recreate? Because it's not easy to, to you know, you cannot just go to someone and say, hi, do you want to be friend? <laughs> How, how, how do you see is the most efficient and effective way to find real good, loyal people that you can be good and loyal to as well and, and, and create this brotherhood? Yeah, it's a very good question. I, I get the question quite often actually from guys and uh, the, the general advice which I give uh, and also um, male friendship is supremely important and I do believe that um, uh, the enemy, uh, so to speak, they they do their best to to dismantle uh, male friendship. And again, if we're talking about culture, you often see male friendship uh, being portrayed as uh, you know, maybe something gay or maybe something. Uh, it's it's seen as something. Um, they're trying to dismantle it, and that's a good sign for us that okay, male friendship it is important and it has always been important and it will be important going forward as well uh, not only for mental well-being but because if we want to you know create good change uh, groups of men mennerbund uh, friendships it's uh, very important and to respond to your question i'd say that the the way you conduct yourself is what you will attract so if you want to attract uh, in terms of friendship other men with similar qualities you first need to you know build yourself up and then you, you will give out a certain aura, you will shine like a light uh, and others will see you. See, okay, this guy is interested in in training, in um, uh, in whatever it might be, uh, different things. He might be interested in, in history, in, in culture, in art, in improving himself. He might like martial arts, he might like all of these different things because they usually go together. Uh, a certain type of man will be interested in, in certain types of things types of things so good places to to find of course universities they are a bit dominated by, uh, by left wing uh, individuals but uh, you can still find good people and then it's especially important if you if you carry yourself in a certain manner people will spot you I talk a lot about physiognomy that you can look on someone and see okay is this guy uh, is he on our side usually it's true uh, not only, you know, you can look on, on someone how if they carry themselves in a good way, uh, if they take care of themselves, you can see if they're healthy. Usually you can see the glow in their face uh, as opposed to people who are not on our side, who are often very sickly looking, very frail, very different. So it's good to spot each other like that uh, and, you know, the aura you present. So the first step is to to build yourself into someone you would like to be friends with and then you will automatically attract uh, similar like-minded people it's worked uh, very well for me at least over all these years that you know automatically you end up in similar situations to i mean we're having this conversation now uh, because of yeah you give out a certain aura i give out a certain aura we find each other so um so yeah that's a, a good way to start at least with yourself and uh you know, you will attract like-minded uh, people eventually. Excellent. Well, Marcus, thank you very much. I uh, advise again everyone who's looking at us to to read your book. Um, the link is in the description. It's uh, legiogloria.com with a yes comma or not. Uh, no, it, it's together. Legiogloria.com. Legiogloria.com. So yes. 
in case you don't look, watch the video and you're listening to it, that's where you want to go. And uh, I've been there, easy to buy. You click, you click, you select what you want. You, you have great merchandise and um, easy to, to pay and, and get delivered very fast. So, so I advise you to do it. It's a great book. I look forward to your next one. Mm. And uh, when everyone can travel, perhaps organize again uh, to meet somewhere. Last time we met in Norway, it was great. Uh, maybe we meet in Russia. Maybe we meet in Sweden. Who knows? There's, uh, we, we, we have to see what's going to be possible in the future. Anyway, thank you very much. And um, let's, uh, let's keep hitting the Temple of Iron, as, as you say to everyone. And um, I'll, we'll, we'll connect soon. Thanks, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Good, good talking to you as always.